Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about the MBTA community zoning here in Belmont. I'm Jeff Hansel, and with us today is Christopher Ryan, the Director of Planning and Building, and Taylor Yates, the Chair of the Belmont Planning Board. Thank you both for being here. Glad to be here. Thanks so much for having us. Well, if it's possible, what we want to try to go through today is to explain what the MBTA 3A community zoning is and how that's going to affect folks in Belmont and what the likely future is going to be in advance of the town meeting that's coming up uh, here at the in the middle of November. So for people that don't, uh, Taylor, tell us a little bit about what the MBTA 3A zoning is. Yes, yeah, so the MBTA Communities Act, or uh, 3A for short, is a state law that was part of a, a uh, 2020 state economic development bill. And the basic premise is to increase uh, multifamily housing across 177, 177 towns in the greater Boston area based on their access to uh, the transit system. Belmont is one of those 177 communities. And so we are required to comply with this law and zone for approximately 1,632 homes. And, and the reason this came about is because there's a shortage in housing. Is that really the need? Yeah, it's arguably the single biggest threat to our local economy is the unsustainable uh, pro uh, cost of housing. Okay, so it's getting at that fundamental issue. Um, and Chris, you you all have been working on this for a while, uh, researching, planning. Tell us a little bit about that, how long yeah, but over two years, um, we started with a uh, um, an advisory committee that was established by the uh, select board, and they worked for um, over a year and then uh, turned over some recommendations to the planning board, and the planning board shaped it further and uh, got us to a point of where we uh, found two maps to uh, be acceptable to send along to the state for what's called pre-application review. This is their um, opportunity to share with us uh, whether our program that we've put together would be compliant with the state law. And it's in process right now, and we should hear back from the state relatively soon. And um, is this, so is there a deadline now coming up uh, following the town meeting, or is it is a process that will be ongoing? No, it's, it's, uh, we have until the end of the year, the last day okay. of the year, to pass the zoning and, and submit it to the state. And um, that will allow us to continue our interim compliance. And then when the state reviews it and determines hopefully that we are fully compliant with the law, then we will be a compliant community. Okay. Um, what, uh, how many different people, uh, groups have been involved in this? Maybe you covered this earlier, but there've been mostly the planning board staff. So, so there's probably, um, three main groups that have dealt with this. One uh, is the planning department. So Chris and, and his team. Second is the planning board. And then the third is the MBTA Communities Advisory Committee, which was a temporary committee established to bring together a number of constituent committees together to uh, advise the planning board on how to proceed with this law. And for those who may uh, be watching uh, Belmont Media Center channels online or on TV, we have actually uh, broadcast many of those uh, MBTA communities mm -hmm. committee meetings. So there is a lot of uh, content online and you can sort of see how the process has developed. Um, so now you're putting this out there to get uh, questions, comments, uh, advice from the public. Is that right? Not that you have, weren't doing it before, but we're now looking at showing the, yeah. what the plans might be. So, um, yeah, so what we've done to date is an extraordinary uh, number of hearings, both on the planning board and through the MBTA Communities Advisory Committee. The public has had enormous opportunity to participate in this process. What we're doing between now and town meeting is uh, trying to reach, um, trying to reach um, members of town meeting and members of the community in different types of formats. So we're bringing it outside of our regular planning board meetings, outside of the re regular uh, advisory committee meetings. 
and um, bringing more information to to the town. And and Chris, what are the what are the main uh, goals in this? It, it, affordability is one aspect of this, but what are some of the other requirements or goals you're trying to meet? Well, we're trying to make sure that, uh, to the best of our ability, it it meets um, with the town's needs and the town's uh, goals. Um, you know, we tried to look back to previous plans uh, for places like Waverly Square and Trapello Road um, to, to make sure that some of the things that we were proposing were in, in line with what people had previously recommended for the town. Um, we're also trying to make sure that these developments, to the extent possible, fit in the context of the neighborhoods that they're located. We've tried to develop some zoning that has a lot of design elements within it so that it will have uh, design features like sloped roofs, uh, dormers, bay windows, things of that nature, to try to add a little design quality uh, to the zoning as well. So the zoning is something that we're still uh, working on, still tweaking, and uh, we're going to be discussing that at uh, future planning board meetings, which tomorrow night, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the 15th, is the, the next opportunity, and then the 29th of October. Um, and hopefully we're going to have uh, some final um, tweaks to that and have that finalized by the end of the month. We're also working on design and site plan review zoning so that we can bolster the tools that we have for reviewing these projects to make sure that they can be the best that they can be. Great. And, and do you want to talk a little bit now about the maps that you have come up with that have uh, developed? Is that something we want to go over? Yeah. Okay, so you have two two ideas, I guess, or two recommended maps, and uh, let's talk about map number one. What's what are the features of that? That's Want me to Chris. do that, Taylor. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. So, so map number one, which is uh, uh, the the planning board's primary um, uh, proposed map, uh, has four concentrations of lots. Or, or areas in town in which they're located MBTA zoning. One of them is the uh, the Waverly area, which was designated as the primary area for what's called contiguity, which is at least 50% of the land area has to be within one area adjacent to a transit station. And so there's a concentration of different types of sub-districts or zoning types around the Waverly area. Um, there's another smaller concentration um, in Belmont Center. Uh, there's one in Belmont Village, the uh, BHA public housing project. And then there's a concentration in an area that we've called uh, Lower Belmont Street, which others called Harvard Lawn, which has some uh, mixed use along the, the Belmont Street frontage and uh, some three triple decker type um, designations within the neighborhood. And that's, that's essentially map number one. Um, map number two differs in only one way. Everything else is primarily the same. The only difference is that that Harvard Lawn area goes away and an area in the Belmont Street area would be added, which includes the Pure Coat uh, manufacturing site. So those are how the two maps differ. And so we're, we're still talking through the benefits of, of each of those right now. So in the I, my my um my guess is that this is ultimately going to come to town meeting to decide between these two. Okay. We'll see, you know we'll see what happens between now and then. But mm -hmm. um, I think we we've tried to organize things such that we're putting the choice in the hands of town meeting. And and given the fact that uh, there is this need for more housing um this is really a more coordinated um predictable way to add the housing uh that that does what it, it's it's less uh disruptive perhaps it's more in line with what fits into the community is that the way to look at it yeah the state designed the law to really give maximum flexibility to the affected towns so we could really design um a plan that worked for us. So, you know, uh, they allowed us to create our own sub districts so that different um, 
different subdistricts could have different form factors so that we didn't have to put one housing type across town. Uh, importantly, the requirements are to zone for it, not to build or even zone for incremental housing. So towns mm -hmm. have a lot of flexibility in terms of exactly how much they want to put in mm -hmm. and where. Okay, yeah, you can see by looking at the map how it's also spread out. It's mm -hmm. centered on one, one particular area. Correct. Uh, is it, uh, can you say, uh, or is it fair to ask you uh, why you would, each of you would prefer one over the other, or do you think at this point either one is uh, is is fine and it's really going to be up to the folks at town meeting to decide which to adopt? Is that, is that right? Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll just, the only comment I'll, I'll add and like why we actually did two maps to begin with is um, there's real question mark over how how much of our commercial zoning we want to include in our MBTA Communities Act plan. So um, specifically, you know, for example, Waverly, we actually include a lot of our commercial zoning. But what we did is we um, use this district called mandatory mixed use that requires retail on the for commercial on the first floor, and then you could put housing on top. And that's because that's probably what you would do there in a vacuum anyways. But then there were some other larger parcels, uh, particularly the Pure Coat site, which is which many people may know as Crate Escape on Brighton Street. And does the town want to use a big commercial lot like that to build housing? And I think there was a um, I think there were enough voices on both sides of that debate that we went with the two map route. OK. And and Chris, what do you think are the or can you tell us a little bit about what the positive outcomes will be from this? Well, I think I think there are a number of potential positive outcomes. I think certainly having a more diverse array of housing options available for not only town residents, but people that may want to move to Belmont, like maybe former students of the high school and others, uh, younger people, young families, uh, seniors. Uh, empty nesters, workforce housing, a, a lot of different uh, housing market sectors really aren't represented that well right now in Belmont. And I think this could uh, be a step in that direction of providing that. I think it's also going to have some positive economic development impact. I think the mandatory mixed use um, development, if it, if it comes about, um, is going to add uh, brand new retailing spaces. Some of it may replace older spaces, but uh, just the fact that they're newer spaces may be they're more suitable for the businesses of today. Um, there may be some additional uh, commercial space that isn't in place now that's actually added, and there will be more customers for the existing businesses in town. So I think uh, from an economic development standpoint, there there is uh, some positives as well. And mm -hmm. there, there also, I think the development in and of itself, given the design uh, characteristics of the zoning and some design guidelines we may add, could actually uh, enhance the uh, you know the character and uh, um, and feel of the community as well. We're not looking to replace old historic buildings, but there are some cases where there's some some buildings that are old and tired, and maybe developing something new uh, mm -hmm. with a high quality could be a positive as well. So these are just some examples of some positives. We have um, a website which you know you you can provide a, li a link to later. But uh, our planning board has, has uh, several different websites that provide resources that have some further details on benefits and other questions that citizens might have. Yeah, and as I, I don't live in Belmont, but I've worked in Belmont for almost 20 years. And I, I do see the, that there are some buildings in Belmont that do look very tired. They're maybe not historic, they're older. And, and you can see that if there was something newer there you, you might uh it would be an improvement um but that's nice that you have that sort of balance between looking at something that's historic and maybe something that uh is maybe that land is not used to its to its best outcome whether it's for housing or um right. and you were saying uh, taylor something about the changes that are going to happen really will happen over time so there may be some less positive outcomes but you act, the town actually has time to respond to some of those. Is that right? Um, yeah, I don't know that I'm so concerned about less positive outcomes. As, okay. Um, you know, I think 
the rate of change that we will see from see. Most of this zoning will be slow enough that you know if you like your neighborhood just the way it is, it's probably going to look like that for quite a while. Okay, okay, but again, it's it's really. Uh, in some cities across the United States, you don't have this kind of choice that and an ability to plan this sort of increase in housing that's needed. So yeah. um, it's probably the best way to go about it, it seems like to me. Yeah, I mean, we don't, you know, Greater Boston is not getting any more land. So the only way to create housing is to um, intensify the use of the land that we have. Okay. Um, anything else that you want to make people aware of as they look at this more deeply and consider it? I mean, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> I think the level of community engagement has been extremely high and the sensitivity to the community has been extremely high. So, you know, I think a, a great example is Waverly, which was selected early on to be our main district, that district that has to have at least 50% of the acreage. And, um, you know, by law, we have to have one that's at least 50%. But we tried to keep it as close to 50% as possible, because even though some folks might say, hey, this is, um, this is good for Waverly on the whole, because it's going to bring a lot of investment to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, you know, felt differently. And so we said, okay, fine, we have to have this district, but we'll keep it, you know, close to the requirement as opposed to dumping everything in Waverly as some people were were expressing concerns about. I see. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, we've been extremely sensitive to to the community. Jeff, if I could add to that, um, one of the things that we're trying to put up on our website, and hopefully we can make a part of the presentations that we make, is we're, we're not ignoring people's legitimate concerns over potential impacts. I mean, I, say, I think some of the concerns are, are overstated, but um, you know, there are some very legitimate concerns. And so what we've tried to do is we've tried to outline what we think um, those impacts will be reasonably and uh, to try to let them know that in every way, either through the zoning or through the maps, we're trying our best to make sure that those are minimized, if not eliminated. Um, you know, this will have an impact. There's no doubt about that. But we're hoping it's a primarily positive impact. And so we hope that the overall program will establish that and reflect that. But we, we welcome questions about anything related to either positive or negative um, potential implications. And so um, we're thinking that if people reach out and know where to reach out and where to find information, that most of their concerns can be uh, allayed. Yeah, and as you indicated, we'll, we'll, we've included some of those on screen and we'll repeat those at the end of the program. <clears throat> For both of you, um, is this perhaps the most complicated project you've taken on? I mean, Chris, you're the the, the uh, director of planning. This is your full-time job. Taylor, you and the rest of the planning board members, you're all serving voluntarily. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of time. How, where do you rank this project in terms of difficulty? Pretty high in my, in my <laughs> book. Yeah, I would say that it, it's probably top five. And, uh, and and I think it's it's something that because it's come from the state and not internally generated, it makes it more controversial. And there are a lot of people that are you know not happy about that. But uh, the the housing crisis is real, and so I do understand why the state felt that they needed to act uh, to do something to re react to that. And uh, this is not a perfect program. It's not a perfect planning program. But we think it's something that we can work within to find something that works for Belmont. Yeah, uh, Chris has been at this a little bit longer than I have, so <laughs> this is definitely the most complicated one that that I have tackled. Um, it's taken an immense amount of time and person hours to do this, and the way I would contextualize that is: I know Belmont has a lot of zoning priorities, and for a lot of people that have been asking me since I've been on the planning board. You know, when are you going to work on X, Y, and Z? The answer is when we're done with this, because it's right. <laughs> so involved. Yeah. Well, and and as you pointed out, this is one of the key needs in, in almost everything you talk about. When you talk about jobs and you talk about education, 
it often comes back to housing and where are people, where can people live to be employed, to go to school? It's, it always works back to that. So, um, so you're doing great work for this community and I know everyone appreciates the amount of time and effort you put into it. Um, Thank you, so, Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it, and let, thank you for having this platform for us, too. You bet. So uh, stay tuned. Um, if you're watching this uh, towards November, you know, stay tuned for town meeting where this will be uh, on the agenda and um, keep up with uh, keep up with what's going on. Watch these videos, become familiar with this so that at town meeting, those of you who are going to be there, We'll be fully informed and, and and discuss this and make the decision you have to make. Um, so thank you both for being here, and uh, good day. Thanks so much. Thank you for having us.